Hey everybody, Carl Schuf here from GreenSock, and today I want to talk to you about Morph SVG plugins convert to path method. I'm going to talk to you about why you need to use it and how you will need to use it. And we're going to talk about it in context of this very simple demo here, where it looks like we have a triangle and a square and a circle morphing into some very basic letter shapes. Now, in the world of SVG, these shapes are a polygon, a rectangle, or a rect and a circle. So we're going to show you that in order to use Morph SVG plugin on these elements, you're going to have to first convert them to paths. So when you're working with SVG, either in a drawing application like Adobe Illustrator, or even maybe if you're creating them programmatically with something like Snap SVG, um, you're going to probably end up with a lot of SVG elements like rectangles, circles, ellipses, lines, polygons, and polylines. Now the thing is, in order for Morph SVG plugin to morph those things, they need to be converted to paths first, okay? So all of these SVG elements can be converted to a path that will contain a D attribute with all the path data. So let's take a look at exactly how this works. Here I have a code pen set up that has a very simple SVG inside of it, okay? And I want to point out that we're seeing the green shapes that we're going to start with, and then we're seeing the letters that we're going to be ending with. So how is this going to work? So here we have this little comment called start shapes, and you'll see that I have my polygon, rectangle, and circle. And the polygon has an ID of triangle, the rectangle has an ID of square, and the circle has an ID of circle, just to keep things really simple. Triangle, square, circle. And then I have a G element with an ID of letters, and that's going to contain all the paths for A, B, and C, okay? So here we have the shapes that are not sort of Morph SVG friendly right now, okay? Because elements like a polygon have um, a point attribute. The rectangle has the X, Y, and width and height attributes. A circle has the C, X, C, Y, and R. And all of this stuff, in order for the morph to work, all those attributes need to be changed to a path so that we can feed in the cubic bezier path and change those values along the way. So these elements are no good. So what we're going to do first is just hide the letters because I don't want to see them really. I'm going to double click on the CSS panel and we're going to activate this little piece of CSS here. That's going to set the letters visibility to hidden. I'm going to hit run and then now we don't see the letters anymore. If I right click on this element, I'm gonna go open up my elements inspector, and again, you'll see the same SVG stuff. There's my little comment. We have our polygon, our rectangle, and our circle, okay? What you see is what you get, and my letters are now hidden, but they're still there. So let's close this out, and let's open up my JavaScript panel. I already have a timeline max created, so you don't have to watch me type out all that code. And now what I want to do is tell the Morph SVG plugin to convert these shapes here to paths. So the way we do that is we're going to say Morph SVG plugin dot convert to path. And so here we can either pass in the actual DOM element that we want to change, or we can use a selector string, which is going to make this really easy. And I'm just going to say get every circle element, every rect and every polygon and I want you to convert them to paths. So I'm just going to hit run and you will notice that everything looks exactly the same but if I go to inspect this element here notice that where we have my start shapes comment now we have path path path. All right we no longer have the rectangle circle and polygon. But you'll also notice that we're maintaining the ID of triangle here, the ID of square, and the ID of circle, okay? So those shapes literally get swapped out with paths in the DOM, and we preserve all the previous attributes like ID, but now you'll see that we have the D attribute that has all the path data. So now those shapes are ready to be morphed. For my first animation, I want to take this path now that has the ID of triangle and morph it into a path that has the ID of A. I named all my letter paths with IDs, A, B, and C to keep it simple. So my first tween, I'm going to tell the timeline to do a two tween. 
The target is going to be the element with the ID of triangle. Uh, we're going to do a duration of 0 0.3 to keep it pretty short. And we need to tell the morph SVG plugin now which shape it's going to use as its target or end shape. So here we're going to say, let's just pick out the element that has the ID of A. We have a whole other video showing you how to use morph SVG plugin, and I strongly recommend you check that out. So let's just see how this animation works right here. There we go. My triangle is morphing into an A. It's repeating and yo-yoing because it's in a timeline with a repeat and a yo-yo of true. So now that I know that this works, it's going to be really simple just to copy that code. We'll paste a new line in, and I'm just going to tell my square that it should animate into the B. And we're going to copy that out, and we'll tell now the circle to morph into the C. We'll hit run, and there you go. A, B, C, as easy as one, two, three. All right, before I go, I just want to point out that the morph SVG plugin convert to path method returns an array. So what I did was I put our function call inside of a console.log. I'm just going to quickly crack open our console, going to hit run, and what you're going to get is an array that contains the elements that are created by the convert to path method. So you may want to store a reference to that array at some point or maybe pull specific elements out of the array. Um, it's up to you. Just want you guys to know that. Next, I want to answer the question that comes up. You know, people might say, why don't you automatically convert all of those elements, you know, that you're passing in as targets to paths? Just, just do it automatically for us. Well, you know, we think that's stepping a little bit too far. Um, we don't want to modify the DOM without the developer specifically knowing it because they may have references to those DOM elements in other code. Maybe they have event listeners on them. So um, we really think it's best and safest that uh, the developer um, does the conversion, okay? And you don't always need to do it by code, you know? When you're using a program like Illustrator, um, you can do it before you even export your SVG. All right, in Illustrator, I just want to show you that if you use tools like the rectangle tool to draw your shapes, and maybe I'll do a polygon real quick like this. All right, so look at our layers. You'll see that we have a path and a rectangle, okay? So if I do File, Save As, and we decide to save as an SVG, um, you're going to see that we get... Um, the rectangle and the polygon. I already have my background one in there, okay? So we know already that we can't use these values or, or these objects directly in Morph SVG plugin tweens. So what you can do if you want to start your artwork in Illustrator is just before you export your SVG and before you name your layers, do a quick selection, right click, make compound path. Same thing on this guy, right click, make compound path. And we're going to just make sure that this one here is named poly. And this one we're going to call rectangle. Hit OK. And then the next time we go to save this as an SVG, you'll see that we get a path with an ID of rectangle and a path with an ID of poly. So um, that's the workflow you can use inside of Illustrator or you can do it all by code. We just want you to have the option. So if you want to try Morph SVG plugin for free, just swing by our CodePen collection, select any demo, click on it, press the fork button, and just slap in your own SVG code and add your own JavaScript. It's free to use on CodePen. Morph SVG plugin is available to our Shockingly Green and Business Green members. To find out more about Club Greensock, just visit greensock.com club. You'll get a list of all the premium plugins and features that you get with your membership. We have Draw SVG plugin, which allows you to control how SVG strokes are revealed. We have Physics plugins that allow you to create effects using friction, velocity, and acceleration. Our Split Text plugin allows you to break apart HTML text into words, characters, or lines. And once that happens, you can do a bunch of crazy and fun animations. So we encourage you to check out Club Greensock, have some fun with Morph SVG plugin, and have fun tweening.